Thank you and good morning. I think everybody is tired after a late night and uh, we are, I'm, uh, what shall I say, our panel is uh, honored that you have taken the trouble to turn up early for a session after that. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Goa Ventura and uh, the staff of Alice for organizing this wonderful three days of uh, knowledge feast, if I may say so. And, uh, and I am happy that I can share with you today some of my thoughts on a subject on which Boa Ventura has been working, has done, I mean, he is the, the authority on this subject. So I thought that I would choose this to, this opportunity to play some of my thoughts on an issue uh, on the social forum and on the social forum process in India. And the impact that it has had on the Indian political discourse uh, I think a subject, in my view, which has not been uh, dealt with, there are barely one or two uh, studies or papers, um, people who have written about it, I'll deal with that um, subsequently, but uh, there has been no credible authoritative uh, research on the issue of the social forum process in India, which has been a very important part of the history of the social forum itself, and also I think a very important milestone in Indian politics as well. So, um, uh, no better way to start talking about the forum um, than to quote something that Boa Ventura has written about the forum, just to describe what the forum is to people who may not be completely in the know about the forum. Um, uh, first of all, I mean, the social forum, as you all know, is a global gathering, and it is uh, evolved as a response to the neoliberal economic policies and capitalist-led uh, globalization. It is uh, a counterpoint to the World Economic Forum in Davos, it was earlier even held on the same dates as Davos to make that counterpoint. It seeks to provide a space for discussing alternatives, the slogan being another world is possible. It is both an event and a process, and very often the process is even more important and significant, as I will say, I will tell you about what happened in India. It has been as significant, if not more, than the event of the social forum itself, which in itself is a very big, very visible, very exciting uh, event uh, per se. Uh, Boaventura has, in fact, described it as a counter-hegemonic globalization and uh, an epistemology of the South, variously has described it this way. And, and I'd like to quote a little bit about, because I think that Boa Ventura has explained it the best, and I cannot do better than that. Uh, the World Social Forum as Political Emergence, he talks about it as a political emergence. The political novelties of the WSF can be seen first in terms of the very broad conception of power and oppression that it seems to have adapted and which responds to the fact that neoliberal globalization is linked with many other forms of oppression that affect women, ethnic minorities, peasants, unemployed, etc. This requires that movements and organizations give priority to the articulation amongst them and ultimately explains the organizational no novelty of a social forum without leaders, its rejection of hierarchies, its emphasis on networks made possible by the internet. The WSF strives for equivalence between the principles of equality and, and of recognition of difference, grounding the option for participatory democracy, which addresses equality without exclusion of difference. Third, the WSF privileges rebellion and non-conformity at the expense of revolution. This is again, I think, a very, very important uh, description. 
There is no unique theory to guide the movements because the aim is not so much to seize power, but rather to change the many faces of power as they present themselves in institutions and sociabilities. At this level, the novelty consists in the celebration of diversity and pluralism, experimentalism, and radical democracy. I close quotes here. Uh, therefore, the World Social Forum is not an organization. It is not a united front or a platform and no one can represent the social forum. It is an open space, a discussion space for movements. It has no organizational binding, no manifesto, no common political resolution. These are some of the things that have characterized the social forum so far. Of course, there are discussions on whether that should change, but I'm not going into that. The focus is on neoliberalism and globalization and alternatives to them, and the, um, uh, the first forum itself in Brazil, which much to the surprise of the organizers, uh, attracted 20,000 people from 500 national and international organizations from more than 100 countries uh, across the globe. Uh, it was supported by the Workers' Party, the growing left movement at that time in Brazil, and that also helped to ground it very firmly in the, in the left and democratic traditions that the social forum has until now and even now has that tradition. Uh, India was proposed as a venue in the second forum of the social forum in 2002. The idea being to globalize it, to take it outside of Brazil and to make it a global event. So India was the very first venue that was thought of outside of Brazil to gather the World Social Forum. So in 2002, and I will talk about the process of the growth of this, uh, of this uh, of the social forum process in India, the Brazilians contacted this two or three people in India in order to start the process there, which also shows how little contact there was between social movements and people between the two countries, in my view, because that also created problems of, of perhaps anointing some people to start the process in the country, which later created some contradictions within the organizing of the forum. The Indian organizations, the next step was the Indian organizations which attended the Brazilian Forum, that is the second Brazil, uh, the social forum in Brazil, they met, there were about 10 organizations, we met and decided that they cannot take a decision, just 10 organizations in India, is such a diverse, such a huge country, that they have to take this back and start a process even for discussing whether or not India should um, should uh, host the forum or not. And this did happen, and three months later, in a city of Bhopal, a declaration came from about 200 organizations which attended there and said, yes, India will host the forum, despite all the differences, there were many differences and quarrels right from the beginning, but decided that in principle, India would host the forum. Now, um, the social forum in 2004 was a big success. I will not waste time talking about it. Many here might have even attended it or have read about it. There were 100,000 participants from 132 countries. 2,600 civil society organizations attended. There were 1,200 conferences, seminars, workshops, 150 street performances involving 2,500 artists from all over the world. There were 3,200 journalists from 45 countries which covered the event, and it was one of the biggest events or gatherings of, social, of uh, movements anywhere. Uh, so the success of the forum, the event was assured, and despite many uh, naysayers who said that India will not be able to uh, organize something as big as the forum, th it did happen. However, my point is about the process. What is the political process that led to that event? What preceded that event? What were the changes, if any, to the discourse in India as a result of the forum? And I think this is where there is less information amongst people who have been watching or observing or analyzing the phenomenon called the World Social Forum. Um, the preparation for the social forum was spread over two years. From 2002 to 2004, it was a two-year process. Now, it was an intense and contentious networking process. Okay, and there was a contention for space. Who will speak? Where will the events happen? Who will take the lead? Why? What? On all these things, there, was, there were differences amongst the movements. But despite that, 
There were movements, there were social movements present, there were NGOs, there were also political party-led mass organizations, since most of the mass organi organizations are led by political parties in India. Uh, and the process, the, the committees or the decision-making process was completely open. Unlike in Brazil, where there were a bunch, a group of organizations which were taking decisions, in India, each meeting of what is called the General Council, which was the highest body of the forum, was open. So each decision, although the principle was that each decision taken is closed in that meeting and will not be opened in the next, but in fact, what happened was that the decision-making process was zigzag. Each meeting, each meeting would question the uh, decisions of the earlier meeting, and it was really an education in participatory decision making, because it was it was big. There were thousands of organizations involved from all over the country, because there were not just the central level meetings, but every single state that's 20, uh, play, almost every single state had their own meetings, which again were open to all organizations. Anybody who agreed with the charter of the forum generally could be part of this. Now this was something that was completely novel and nobody thought that something like this could even happen because I will tell you later what was the political climate in which this was happening in India and perhaps it's not different from the political climate in many other parts of the world and so far as political uh, tendencies are concerned in relationship with each other. Now uh, what was the Indian political scene at that time? Uh, now, in India, except for the social movements, mass organizations are led by political parties. So the culture of the political parties is an important, was an important part of the World Social Forum process. Although, technically, political parties are not supposed to participate in the forum as political parties, but in fact, in, in effect, the political parties are present through their presence in the mass organizations and the movements that they are part of. So they were there. The social movements are, of course, independent. But there is a huge gap between social movements and political parties, within political parties, within social movements. There's a big gap. And between social movements and political parties, the gap is very, very big. So there is a lot of mutual suspicion. There are emotional responses to each other, often personality clashes where one cannot bear to sit across the table with the other. Now, there, are, there is history to that. There are often uh, history of bloody struggles between the organizations where there has been killing and murder, political murders that have happened in the past, for instance, between the Communist Party Marxist and the Maoist, between the National Alliance of People's, of, uh, people's Movements, you might have heard of Medha Patkar and the Anti-Dam Movement and the CPM. So there have been clashes in history where they don't talk to each other. So then the social forum brings them to a table in which they are forced to look at each other even. And in a country like India, where the caste system and hierarchies are so ingrained even in the political system, to, to engage with each other itself is a big uh, a crossing of a barrier, you might say. And this was not happening only at one level of meetings. You must remember this was happening at the level of each district, each state. So people where they have been fighting each other were sitting across the table and getting to know each other. And this, in my view, was the greatest uh, contribution of the World Social Forum to political uh, discourse in India. Perhaps this is also the case in other places, but I can say for sure that in India, this began a certain invisible, you could say, alliance building at the grassroots level, which later also continued. Because a lot of personal friendships also were forged across political divide, which also stayed. So there was a, you could pick up the telephone and speak to each other, which in other circumstances you wouldn't have. So a certain taboos were broken by which some of the hostility, mutual suspicion were there taken care of. This helped also when the elections came around where people could speak to each other and fight together in the circumstance where there was, a very, there was for the first time, in fact, a clear right-wing government called the Bharti Janta Party. I mean, it's a new government that has, the same party has again formed a government at the center in India now. But at that time, that the same gentleman who is the Prime Minister of India today was responsible at the helm of affairs when there was a huge pogrom against minority Muslim communities, after which the left and democratic movements realized that unless they come together, unless they get over some of their mutual suspicion, they are not going to be able to change anything in the country. The luxury of 
uh, of sectarianism is no longer available. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing. And the other thing is that, the, uh, as I guess every, anywhere in the world, the leadership of the political parties and organizations were not as much in favor of the forum as were the cadre on the ground. There was a general suspicion of a non-hierarchical structure which did not respect leaders, which did not stand up when leaders came into the room, which did not allow them first right to speak, which did not privilege them on the platforms of the events of the so a lot of suspicion, which, and many leaders of many organizations tried to prevent, tried to prevent this, uh, this, this kind of coming together across political barriers. However, as I said, the social forum uh, did happen. So one of the main things that the, that the, the features of the forum, one of course the organizational structure being open, a large diversity of people coming together, a cultural resurgence you could say, where all kinds of cultural activists came together in an area of social cultural arena which is very important in India, where, which is riven by caste and uh, geographical and language divisions. This also was an important, the participation of the marginalized and a huge confidence building process for the small marginalized sections of people who felt that they were part of a larger community, that they are a big, they're part of a very um, big community of people who think uh, alike insofar as alternatives or searching for alternatives are concerned. There was also, uh, it militated against the basic insularity of Indian movements and against the whole kind of inward lookingness of the movements and it opened up Indian movements to the world and the world to the Indian movements which was also a new thing which has continued to this day. It is a um, what shall I say, a contribution of the forum. So, um, yeah, one of the criticisms of, I mean, which uh, Boa Ventura has also mentioned in writings about India, there were two main criticisms that came up from, um, uh, for one from Joy Sen and the other from Rupe, that is Rajni Desai, two writers who have written about the forum. And I'd like to deal very briefly with some, with, with some of the points that they've raised. Now Joy Sen has said that this, there was a domination of one particular left party in the process. In my view, that was not true at all. In fact, my critique was that the political party, particularly the uh, 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 rather sectarian inward looking party like the CPM did not participate and was not in favor of the party participating in the forum because it was too open and too broad. And they allowed their people, middle level activists from their organization to participate. There was no, so I don't think that that uh, criticism was really quite true. In fact, I'll come to the, the real critiques, I think, of the forum from my point of view, but that was not really a true. And the people from the party who were there were representing their own mass organizations, not the party, not the party at all. The other, of course, was the critique from the Maoist, which uh, is Rupi represented, which gave rise to something called the Mumbai resistance. Those of you who were in Mumbai would have seen there was a parallel event called the Mumbai resistance, which was organized mainly by the left uh, the um, uh, Maoist uh, uh, parties and uh, organizations. Their main uh, critique was that this is just a talk shop, it doesn't do anything, that it is foreign funded and therefore imperialist agents, but none of that really led to any continuity of the Mumbai resistance. So it, it stopped with its reaction. So it is again reactive politics and one of the points a forgotten fact to make is that there is, a, in the political, uh, uh, the political milieu, the discourse in India is one of permanent critique. Now this I think is a part of uh, 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 movements which do not see a hope for the future and do not have a vision for the future. So critique becomes the safe uh, defense against not being able to offer it a, a vision for the people whom they're leading. What is it that you will do when you come to power? What is it that you will do if you were in power? What is it that you will offer as a program, whether it is in agriculture, whether it's industry, whether it's most of them would still say that if we come to power, if you, if you really dig deep, there will be, they would believe in a single party uh, system. They, they have not challenged that. 
And nobody has challenged that yet and did not get challenged in the forum either. So coming to the critique again, I'll start with that. There was not much of an engagement with alternatives. Still, in the forum in India, it was about critique. It was about maybe not so much criticism of each other, but a critique of neoliberal globalization, a critique of capitalism, a critique of on, on an engagement with local issues which, which they were involved. There was very little on another world is possible. What kind of world would that be? Very little, insofar as the forum is concerned, in the process or in the event. And although socialism is, an, is a word that's very acceptable in political discourse in India, as acceptable as democracy is, nobody has really filled in, filled in the blanks as to what socialism will actually mean. All those who actually talk about it also, all the political parties from the left and the social movements, and the social movements feel quite comfortable in focusing only on the issues on which they are uh, working. So, uh, this was one uh, major critique that insofar as alternatives are concerned. The other is it did not break the personality-driven politics or the personality-driven uh, critiques of even of the forum. They're very personality-driven, and this is something, I think, very peculiar to the Indian process. It's still very personality-driven, and these are some of the problems that we are coming up against if we try to revive the forum. <laughs> So the leaders also are quite personality driven. There are parties in India which are named after individuals rather than ideas or publications. So, uh, and finally, the main critique being the success of the Indian Forum itself has been its downfall because the success of the Forum has meant there are people who would like to dominate it. There are people who would like to speak on its behalf or speak in the name of the Indian Forum, all of which meant that the process post the 2004 became one of, because most people were tired after that, and the people who did capture it and tried to, who tried to capture it and do something, failed because the very nature of the forum, it collapses if it is controlled. And this we could see very clearly in India. The 2006, there was an Indian Forum, which was not at all uh, a success. Um, Concluding, I would just like to say that, however, the social forum was a very, very positive experience, something that, uh, that later, we, perhaps not in the name of the forum process, but a lot of movements learned from and built on what the forum gave to the movements in India. So it has been a very exciting history. Um, the, the whole idea of monolithic uh, organization and theory, the whole idea of the of the leadership-based idea, uh, th uh, theorizing and organization, these have been challenged. And the whole idea of just one vision has also been challenged, which is something that can be built on. Now, how this will uh, go, whether the cadre and the grassroots activists will be able to convince leaders to again revive the process is something that needs to be seen. But I think that there is still a chance with the right-wing government coming into India that it's possible that the cha another chapter in the forum's history will possibly be written in India again. Thank you very much.